Welcome back everyone. I've been turning my blown up 4 liter into a Stroker 4.6. The block was assembled in my last video and now it's time to reinstall it into the Cherokee. Note to anyone looking to buy eBay headers, don't get these GXP ones. They don't seat properly on the head and you will have an exhaust leak. All right, today is the day. After four months, we are finally gonna start the stroker up. Just need to prime the oil pump, put the uh, coil pack in, and uh, should be good to go. Here goes. Let's <laughs> start out first try. We got to rev it for uh, 25 minutes, I think. Unless something happens. Yeah. Did you want it? Okay, the floor is just all wet. The floor is all wet from earlier. Any oil? No, it's just water. Okay. Yeah, if you notice anything, flag me down. I'll do that strobe Breaking in the motor for the next 500 miles, which is basically just driving it a little bit harder than I normally would, keeping the RPMs varied, and avoiding long stints on the freeway.
The stroker is broken in, got some miles on it, and it is running great. Not without a few hiccups along the way. Honestly, before doing this rebuild, I had put maybe five miles on this Jeep before having to tow it home and then going straight into the teardown. So there were a lot of little things once I got it running that I had to fix up. I mentioned in the video of taking it home that it had some power steering issues. It ended up just being a hose, but it was leaking pretty bad once I got it running. Um, had a major exhaust leak at the head from these cheap eBay headers that I bought. So I ended up swapping those out for a set of Banks headers. Had a little scare with the oil pressure sensor. You come up to a stoplight and oil pressure would drop zero and you get your check gauges. And it was a little scary, especially on a, a brand new engine rebuild that you've done yourself without any prior experience. But um, got that solved and oil pressure is good at hot idle. And there goes my flag. Hold on. Yeah, one one thing I will say about anyone thinking of doing the rebuild, a lot of people online will tell you, you know, how quick and easy it is. And granted, it is quite an easy rebuild as as far as like engine work goes. But um, I think there's a lot more that goes into it that people don't mention just like all the parts you end up replacing while you're in the engine bay it's like accessible so it's like i'm gonna put a new water pump in i'm gonna put fuel injectors in whatever so it's not just as simple as like taking taking the engine out putting putting your new crank and pistons in there and, and slapping it back on you could get away with that but with the amount of money and time you're spending on it you might as well replace it Really, a majority of the time that it took was sitting around waiting on the machine shop. Um, I think once I got the block back, I had it built in a weekend. So this is the first time taking the Jeep out on an actual trail. So I'm going to shoot a little bit and uh, get some shots of the stroker. There's also a noticeable amount of power gain doing the rebuild, um, especially on highway driving. Uh, I felt like with the 4.0, if you had to step on the gas, it just wouldn't do it. That's one of the big things I've noticed so far. Uh, nothing crazy, but it definitely has a little more oomph and pickup to it. If you're at the point where you need to do a rebuild, it definitely makes more sense to do the stroker build as opposed to just a reman 4.0. If you made it this far, thank you for being along for the ride. It's definitely been a learning process. It's been fun. It's been stressful, but so worth it. And honestly, I kind of want to do another one. But for now, that's going to do it. I'm sure there'll be more videos in the future of upgrades and hopefully uh, adventures in the Jeep. So thanks again.